Hello, it is I, Dr. Brian Lorgan 11, and welcome back to Puddle Knights. It always likes to start me in the next level, even though I still haven't finished all the things in this level. Cutoff points. Since the last episode, I've taken a look at this one. It seems to me to be extremely constrained at the beginning. Uh, as far as I can tell, the only set of opening moves that can ever get you anywhere is kind of approximately this. But then at this point, um, after breaking those two bits of cape, I have three bits of cape on yellow guy and one bit of cape on blue guy. And I have uh, more than four things that I need to traverse. I need to traverse uh, two, three puddles and two trapdoors. And so I have to reuse a cape somewhere. And I found a solution that involves reusing yellow's cape. So the idea is I'm actually going to break off a bit of blue's cape here. And then with that broken off, Yellow needs to hold this trapdoor down forever for the rest of the puzzle. Um, but everybody else needs to get out. And so I guess in order to do that, I need to do this. And this. And now you could walk all the way over to here and hang out. And now Yellow's cape is going to be reused in a different spot right here. And that gets us to the exit. All right, and that gave me an achievement for doing everything in World 4. Okay, um, I guess we're moving on to World 5, which is called Lacking in Many Areas. What is this going to be about? Oh, Lackey. She's got a veil, and she's got a lackey. <laughs> uh, let's find out how he moves. And I presume... He's standing in a puddle right now, so I guess it doesn't matter if his feet get dirty. But presumably he also, like, can't drop the veil in mud or something, something, something. Not sure exactly what's happening here just yet. So let's do some walking around and try to understand. I guess this just, oh, I see, places an extra constraint. <laughs> and that the lackey is now going to be causing more of a noble footprint on the whole game which makes things more constrained for the player okay so we're imagining that that's just tutorializing that and so if so it is done it effectively if there's something else i'm supposed to learn then uh we might not yet be there also, the lackey was able, just like another knight, to actually break the cape. So that's something else that I just learned by accident. Um, what do I think I'm doing? It almost seems like that's the only reasonable first move. So if I did this... Oops. If I did this... Oh, okay, so the obvious thing to do is this, and then the lackey breaks my cape, which is what I meant to discover. So the less obvious thing to do is this, <laughs> and keep my cape intact, and the lackey will be able to just walk across the puddles on his own, because he's just a lackey. Got it. And then, okay, this is pretty interesting, actually. So then if I had walked here, she could walk to here, but then I would be stuck. So instead, I should have walked a different way, like this. She can walk to here, and now I'm in front of her. Oh, and now, oh. Will she not be able to, like, turn through the lackey? I'm not even sure how this is all going to work. Okay, so if I go here. <laughs> okay, lackey's in the way. I'm curious about something. What if I had been standing here and she tries to move? 
Yeah, okay. So, it's a constraint. She is a four-long train that only has collision detection at the engine and at the caboose. <laughs> is a way that I can kind of model this in my brain. All right. So... After she takes a step, I won't... Oh, I can take a step because he's standing on it. That's something I normally wouldn't be able to do otherwise. Interesting. And then she could walk back over here. But now I don't have a cape anymore. Okay, but this is the first time that a noble has been standing on my cape and I was able to move. And it's because the lackey, I guess, is heavy enough to break off the cape or something. Okay, so this is a very well-formed tutorial puzzle to demonstrate to me the many ways in which the new elements behave. So, with all of that knowledge having been gained by yours truly, how the heck do I solve the puzzle? I guess while I'm over here, I could have the lackey break. No, I can't have the lackey break one section of cape because she's standing on the mirror section now. Okay. And so if I had done... She can't go back into her trail. I'm not sure what I'm doing here now. <laughs> what am I doing here now? How about this? Did I try this already? Perhaps. Yeah, I was recently here. I could take another step. No, she can't turn around there either. And I kind of did this before and got into all kinds of issues. I can't walk through the lackey. She can't walk through there. I see, but she can turn around like that. Okay. But the lackey would be standing on my cape there, so I'd want to move. All right, this is surprisingly complicated for what seems like a simple addition to the game. But it taught me the things I needed to know. It feels like this is going to make things a whole lot more complicated, especially if we introduce any of the other elements, like uh, verticality or metal. Well, the metal capes haven't been so bad. Tacky Lacky. All right, Tacky Lacky. Uh, there's only two places that we need to do puddles. Can I possibly just utilize the Tacky Lacky to break my cape off in those spots and then not worry about anything else? For example, by doing that... Uh, well, I can just do this. I don't even need to break off my cape over here. Okay. That one was pretty straightforward, so I guess that is in case somehow you solved the previous puzzle without having the Lacky stand under your cape and break it off. Perhaps that's tutorializing that. Fast lane. Now we have two one length capes. We have trapdoors, which are my nemesis. Fortunately, there's only three of them and they're all going the same direction. All righty. And she just needs to make a U-turn. Which, of course, is not a thing she can do. So I guess I'm doing something along the lines of... If you hold this open for me, I can leave my cape here. You could walk back around. Then we could have capes on two different spots. Oh. Oops. She needs to be on a cape right at the beginning, though. Okay. So I kind of kind of went a little too fast here. So I guess for the first step, in order for her to get anywhere, 
I need to do something like this. Oh, but then he's gonna break my cape. How do I feel about that? Not good. And yeah, she's gonna have nowhere to go. And I don't have anything useful I can do here. So what does her first move look like? I guess it could have looked like... Uh, no, can't get the lackey there. Okay, I guess it could have looked like... This. He breaks my cape, but I'm still free to move. Oh, but now she can't move anywhere. Because she's got the lackey behind her, and she's got me in front of her. Ooh. So what is the first move in this puzzle? More specifically, what is the first move for her? We already tried this. And the problem is, after taking two steps, she has nowhere to move, the lackey breaks off Yellow Guy's cape, and we're toast. Because with Yellow Guy's cape gone, Red Guy can't possibly traverse the rest of the puzzle. If she wanted to be able to turn... Yeah, she's never going to be able to turn around. She just needs to keep moving forward. Which means the lackey is always going to be right behind her. She can't move anywhere, I can't move anywhere, and the only place I could move with yellow breaks the cape. So what kind of crazy things have I not tried? I guess I haven't tried this. That's not going to help anything. I haven't tried... Here we go. I haven't tried this. This is what I need to do. Okay. She and her lackey can move over here. I can continue this way. And even this way. Uh, not this way yet. Hold on. Yellow. Cycle around. Alright, now red can take another step forward. Here we go. And now she and her lackey can move over here. And I guess she and her lackey could move over there next. Do I mind losing Yellow's cape at this point? Probably. So let's ideally move in such a way that we don't lose any capes, which means red needs to come to the rescue temporarily. So we'd lose a cape there, so we'll move here. Oh, she doesn't have anywhere to go, but that's okay. We can fix that. Right? Right. Now she has somewhere to go. Okay, so now we're just kind of reversing it the other way around, something something, dark side. This seems pretty plausible. Uh, <laughs> At this point, I think I could lose a cape and be okay. Because I only need one cape left. So I think if I break off red's cape... No, I can't break off red's cape. Hold on. If I broke off yellow's cape, but yellow's kind of in the way. Hold on. Yellow, what are you doing right now? You need to do something better with your life. Maybe we should just do that. And then yellow should do this, and red can do this, and we don't need to break anybody's cape. Because we've gotten to the exit. Hooray. Okay. The once I got across, like, going back shouldn't have been quite as difficult as I made it out to be, I think. Um, I was just kind of thinking about the puzzle a little bit wrong. Minimal training. Minimal training. So she only has a one long train this time. Hence the very clever puzzle pun title. 
and I need to use the lackey somehow. Perhaps somehow. What if I do this? I stand here. Oh, she's stuck already. Hold on. I have to rescue her first. Uh, is she better here? Oh, the lackey would be standing in my thingy. That's not what I want. I want her, oh, I want her to be going clockwise rather than counterclockwise, which doesn't seem possible. She's always going to be diagonal from the lackey unless we do something like this, in which case the lackey would be too behind her. How can I take advantage of this? This at least gets her closer to the exit, but it also traps me. Let's reset. What if I had begun like this? Oh, he's in the way, right? Yeah, she doesn't have a lot of space to move. <laughs> Problematic. I wonder how she got into this situation in the first place. What events led up to the beginning of this puzzle? Please post your lore in the comments below. <laughs> uh, oh, it occurs to me that she could do this, but then I can't move anywhere, and she can't move anywhere, and no one can move anywhere. Wow, there is such little state space to explore. She currently can't move anywhere. So in order to make a first move with her, I either have to have a first section of cape next to her or a second section of cape next to her. First has a little bit more flexibility and that she can walk all the way around and possibly go places. But basically right now, all she can do is walk in a circle or trap herself here, which would eventually trap me. So it seems I want to stop in one of these positions. If I stop here, I won't have any cape left. There's no way we could solve the puzzle. If I stop here, I will be trapped and there's no way to solve the puzzle. So none of that worked. And that's with Red Knight moving counterclockwise. What if Red Knight were moving clockwise? Can't do anything here. Can't do anything here. Here we go. Found it. I can break off one bit of cape. Then I can go over here and... I should have gone the other way. Yeah. There we go. Okay. All I had to do was enumerate all of the possibilities because it was such a small state space. Um, that bodes well for me because enumerating possibilities is easier than intuitive solving or insights uh, in my book. Cuddle Puddles. <laughs> That's a good name. Okay. At a glance, this one doesn't look awful. I guess, ideally... Uh, right, she was here. I think I just want my cape here. Oh, she can't. Uh, I was going to try to get the lackey to like break it off over there or something. Also, that would not help me get to the exit. I need to hold on to this cape until she gets close to the exit. Okay. If I'd gone here, does that change anything? Yes, because now she's capable of walking up here. Lackey would be standing on my cape there, so I need to do this. Then I need to take advantage of the space to walk underneath the train, turn myself around, do a little dance. 
there we go. I'm starting to get a feel for these puzzles, I think. Something in my brain felt like it clicked on that one, and so let's hope that it carries over into the next puzzle, entitled The Old One Two. Speaking of two, uh, this time her train has two bits of cloth that are hanging in the air. And it looks like we have a one-length cape on yellow and a two-length cape on red. And already a little bit of movement puzzle to not get stuck, but pretty simple geometry. Suppose, for example, that I did something like this at the beginning. I see the issue, but once again, I know how to solve it now, which is while the train is in the air, that is a good time to move a knight. Okay, so I managed to preserve all of my capes and get her moved that far. Now, a question we might ask ourselves is, how much more cape do I need to solve the puzzle? Looks like there are four bits of puddle she would need to traverse at minimum, and that's assuming she walks across the very northmost stones. So I do need to preserve my capes a little while longer. So I think right now I'm imagining something along these lines. Gold guy is now safe enough to... Uh, mm, Yeah, let's have him go ahead and move out here for just a second. Not there, though. She could go here. And now the problem is Red Knight has clogged up the exit. However, I could break his cape. Yeah, I could break his cape. Let's break his cape. Because I could use Yellow Knight's cape for this, perhaps. No. Yellow... Well... Yeah, it's too late now. Some knight would have had to go from the spot where Red Knight is now to the north. And then either... I think and then had their cape broken, basically, in order for her to traverse the tile. So, okay. So perhaps I should have done that right now with Red Knight. And I also need Yellow Knight to have his cape broken, I think. Yeah, I need Yellow Knight's cape to already be broken, because I need both of these guys to be able to turn around on a dime. So let me find an opportunity to break Yellow Knight's cape, and one exists right here. Okay, Yellow Knight, you are now free to move freely. So use your newfound freedom to break Red Knight's cape. And now the puzzle is solved. Okay, yeah, I feel like I'm getting better at these. And we still have time to move on to Puzzle the Next, also known as Crossover Episode. Crossover, you say. Uh, there's no trapdoors, there's no elevation. There's just a four-length red cape and a two-length yellow cape and some very weird geometry. All right, it looks like I'm gonna need that four length cape early on in the puzzle in order to do anything. And do I want to break a piece of it for her to stand on temporarily? How much cape am I going to need at the end of the puzzle? From the exit, there's a bit of stone, and then I need to have one, two, three, four, five, six, which is all of my capes. So I can't break any capes, is what I believe I'm hearing myself say. 
which means she would need to stand somewhere temporarily. For example, here. Oh, but Red Knight missed his chance to move. Oh, he doesn't have a chance to move. The lackey is always standing on his cape. Lackey, why you gotta be so tacky? I don't necessarily need all six bits of cape at the end if there is a temporary place for her to stand. So perhaps I can break off a small bit of cape at some opportune moment. However, there's very little room to maneuver at the end of the puzzle. Which makes me think that breaking off cape is not going to be possible at the end of the puzzle. Yeah, I don't see a way to break off cape in the last puddle right before the exit. So if we work under the assumption that I cannot break off any cape, then how can I ever get her to a temporary safe spot before she gets to the wooden platform portion of the landing? I was not able to utilize the fact that she has one bit of airspace in her train because Puddle Guy was continually walking on that. Is there a way I could have instead done something clever with overlapping color capes. Uh, if I started with yellow, then got them completely on red, then yellow would be free to move again. I think that's what I need to do. So actually, I think yellow might need to go first and offer up this first bit of walking space. Then red hangs out somewhere where yellow will be able to get back around. So something like this, I think. Then she walks over to here. Well, yellow's free to move, but unfortunately now the entire way is clogged. So I accomplished one thing, but not another. Is there a way for red to have stood that would have not clogged everything and perhaps yellow could walk underneath the train? How could yellow have walked underneath the train anywhere here? I'm not sure, but there's probably a way. I would need, what would I need? I have an idea in my brain, but there's no visualization to go with it. If Yellow stands in between, she'll never be able to move because her lackey is gonna be blocked by the guard by the night. That was the obvious thing I tried at the beginning. Uh, did I try this? This actually has possibilities. I was thinking it had possibilities because her train was on a corner that yellow could almost kind of not really walk by. <laughs> what do I want yellow to be able to do? I want yellow, could yellow just get ahead of all of this? Well, no, she needs to walk somewhere first. She needs to walk somewhere and then yellow needs to get ahead. But the problem is that's clearly impossible. What if... I had a better idea. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? Mm. 
Actually, if she takes... Uh, no. Hmm. Hold on. Like, I can't quite do this because she can't move. But I want something. What do I want? Yeah, there's nowhere good for Yellow to move yet. And then her lackey is going to be standing on Yellow's cape because he's following the same footsteps. I need the knight to move in between. So I need her to step across only a single tile of one color. That is not po No, it is possible at the beginning. Well, it's not possible at the beginning because you'd have to be in the way. Is it possible somewhere else? So let's go back to the point where red was first. After having stepped on a bit of red, could you possibly step on a single tile of yellow and then back onto red? That's what I'm now curious about. Suppo okay, here we go, here we go. What if I had gone this way? Single tile of yellow and then back onto red. There's kind of that, but not really that. Um, I should just be able to picture this, but I actually have to take the steps. Here you're stepping on both of our capes, so that's not very good. Here you can step on a single tile of yellow. But not then back onto red. And I guess... Here you step on yellow and back onto red, but it's not in an interesting way because yellow could have just like not been there in the first place. Okay. Suppose I was wrong about the exit. There is cape breaking involved and I need to break a cape at the beginning. I probably want to break as little cape as possible. And so let's imagine that the cape I break at the beginning is, say, one bit of cape there. This is not helping. She's going to be completely trapped. So if instead it works like this, one bit of cape gets broken, you still can't get out because there's still not enough room. What if the knights were the ones who were breaking the cape? So what if yellow knight stands on red knight's cape? Say, for example... Here. Now is it possible for us to get them there? Yellow can't do it on his own. Maybe that's okay. Because red could help like this. And yellow, I guess, is going to lose some of his cape too. Is there a way for yellow to not? If I had broken red's cape in a different spot at the beginning, yes. I would want to have broken it one further to the left. But then she'd be in the way. But it could have been one further down. Okay, so I have a vision in my head for a reason that I would actually prefer. How do I break that there, though? Uh, by doing this. And also preparing over here, maybe. So if I broke this here, then uh, yellow is going to be in the way. 
Uh, yellow could do something clever. Ah, uh, that's what I just did, so I need to go the other way. This is also not going to work. I'm not sure exactly what my idea was anymore. <laughs> Yeah, I don't remember why any of this was any good. I was doing well, and I feel like I fell off of the truck. <laughs> um, so perhaps that's a good place to go ahead and leave it here for today. And I'm going to say, I hope as always, that you all are having a great day. And I will see you again soon for more Puddle Nights. We're now, in addition to knights, we have lackeys holding a train. For now, bye-bye. <laughs>